Hi everybody, welcome back to The Young Grower. So this is part two of our June allotment tour. We're up here on the chicken orchard. So let's do this. Call me out tiger. Call me out, why don't you learn? Lift me up higher. Above the clouds, won't you learn? The scenery is right, go right in I want to fall deep within Don't leave me hanging just cause I'm too proud Whisper away my outdated doubts Somebody do me the courtesy Dress me down That old yet I'm far too young to not stand my ground. But my ways are mine and I don't wanna change. In the last video we took you around and we showed you what was growing. There was lots of onions and shallots growing up here. Most of them got affected by white rot. Out of the camera view is a bit of a building site at the moment. We got the new chicken fencing going up and we've got the preparation work for the polytunnel that is going to be delivered hopefully this week. Fingers crossed, we've just planted some corn, some squash and a few different bits. So let's go and have a look and see what we've got growing. But before we do go, you've probably noticed there is a globe artichoke there. There's two of them and I'm going to leave them for the wildlife and the flowers are just absolutely beautiful. So we're going to start off with this bed that is in front of the greenhouse and in front of it we have some terracotta pots we have a salvia hot lips that was from a cutting i took then we have a thyme chives chives another thyme and then over here we have a orange thyme what i grew myself and do have a few more to plant up and i'm going to give some of them to fellow plots so behind the terracotta pots in this bed we have a bit of a mixture so I planted the extra corn we've had. You can see there's four rows there in the grid. Then I planted some dahlias at the end, but yeah, the slugs have pretty much had their feast over the last couple of days. Then we have some chives planted at the end. Then I planted some cosmos in between the dahlias. So I'm thinking if the dahlias do get eaten, at least there's gonna be some sort of flowers. And then all in between the sweet corn, we have planted calendula. So I can't remember all the types of calendula that are here, but there is a wide mixture. And I'll be harvesting these to make some sort of calendula salve, turn them into some cool herbal products. Then next to it, we have a squash or a pumpkin that is looking very depressed. I didn't actually sow this seed, the chickens did and it was over there and because we're doing a new fencing it had to be removed so I thought I'll put it in here and the slugs again have had a right feast but I'm hoping it will still survive and over there we have some more of the sweet stem chard and the slugs are having a good feast at that but I'm just letting it get established and then I'll start picking some for the chickens this is not for me to eat so I'm not too fussed about that and there's a calendula over there and then there's some um, more multi-sown leeks that I had spare then we have the flower bed down there but we'll talk about that one after let's just do all the veg first so in here I planted some sweet potato slips they were ones we had left over once we planted everything so I thought I had the space here I'll just plant it and see what happens they may grow they may not they're ones that have been grown in the UK from UK varieties so hopefully they actually have a chance. I've had some people grow them outside, so there's nothing to lose. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, they don't. We have some poppies, cosmos, and another poppy over there. And then here we have this poppy. What is getting ready to open is flower coming just there. So I don't think it'll be long, maybe tomorrow. And then at the back there, I have planted a cucumelon. 
and hopefully that will climb up there and go onto the shed. I was planning for the squash that I planted in there. It was a crown prince to do that, but it didn't really want to, so I've undone it and I've put it down here and there is a little crown prince growing. I planted some more of the spare corn we had just here. If it pollinates, it pollinates. If it don't, yeah. Some shallots that were still growing that I've left in there. And these are cauliflower. I see the slugs have had a good feast on these as well. But the growing point is still okay. I say they're cauliflower. They look more like a cabbage. Yeah, I can't remember. This bed is just like some plants that I had left over that I thought I'd just plant and see what happens. And there is the little crown prince. And this bucket is just filled with manure. But there's lots of side shoots and that coming off the base. So maybe it will still grow up there and onto the top of the shed. Then just in here is the elephant garlic. It was a monobulb we planted a bit late. We got it from one of my admins on allotment bible so we'll harvest that soon because it looks like it's starting to die back and then there's some more poppies i actually planted those seeds there i didn't think anything was going to grow from them some more shallots and then here we have some more turnips that are growing away nicely with a few bugs enjoying them so then over here is a bit of a weed area i need to actually cut the grass but these flowers have come up. I can't remember the actual name of them, but we're colour coordinated today. But in these we have some squashes. I can't remember what squashes they are. And they're just bare plants. And I had some of the free manure, so I thought I'd just plant them and see what happens. I know this one here is a Boston squash. And this is the one variety that I really wanted to grow this year. It's from 1831. And as you can see, there's a little one down there and it's still growing so yeah curious to see how big that one gets compared to the one that's planted in the ground i'm going to give everything a good feed in the next couple of days we've just got some new feed sent to us to try out from natural growers what well, is absolutely brilliant so thank you for that and i can't wait to try it greenhouse needs a good feed i ran out of feed a couple of days ago so perfect timing Even though the grass is long, I actually sort of like it and the wildlife are loving it as well. But I will come through soon and give it a good cut back. Yeah, because else it will just come over too much and I don't want everything to eat my stuff. Just like this end one has been demolished by some hungry slugs. Yeah. <laughs> some things work some things don't so this here is our aubergine and cucumber trial i know the cucumbers are going to grow but what i'm sort of hoping is as the cucumbers get bigger that will eventually give the aubergines a chance to grow they'll be hid amongst the cucumbers that is the plan they are doing okay this one here is the worst at the end but as you go more in they yeah they're doing okay so we will do a separate video on this aubergine trial I did one of when we planted it so we have a mixture of different cucumbers here we have a oh hello didn't see that one there so we're going to harvest that one today so this one at the end is a crystal apple and there's lots of flowers so hopefully soon there'll be some fruit and that one there is the white toma and yeah it is really loving being outside they're all outside varieties but i'm just interested to see what produces well couldn't actually find a cucumber last year that we actually like but this one i am hoping it's the one the aubergines in the end one a pandora stripe then these ones here are the feng yong purple i believe and then at the end here these are check early and the one right at the end that is being demolished by the slugs is a long purple. But yeah, they're doing okay. They're starting to flower. So it's going to be interesting to see how they fruit compared to the ones inside. And to be honest, some of these look better than the ones inside. 
But we'll go in the greenhouse now and show you what things are like in there. I was just about to take you in the greenhouse, but these ones started to gob. Get the camera out, and they're quiet. The ladies are outside at the moment, and then the chicks are in there, but we're gonna actually go in in a little bit and see them. So in this greenhouse, we have the garlic, and this is the one from part one. And then this is the stuff we harvested a while back. You can see it's nearly dry. These racks were for seeds starting at the beginning of the year and now using them to dry the garlic. So we have lots of sweet peppers on this side and these are all heirloom varieties. So we have a mixture of ways we've planted these. We've done some in some grow bags we cut in half and there's some in some old flower buckets as well. The ones at the back are looking a little bit yellow. I'm going to give them a good feed though later on because I ran out but yeah exactly the same thing just different way of growing them so they've had the same amount of feed but these are doing really well so these ones here are the napier pointy red those two and then we have a samoa and then we have dido de mocha put the name for all of these on the screen as well and that's another one of them and then here we have the Amy sweet Hungarian pepper. It's a sweet version of the hot wax pepper. So I can't wait to try them. I think they're due to be harvested soon. And there's lots on those ones back there. And there's another Napier red pointy one. Then there's another Samoa over there. But look at that Samoa. I think they might be actually different compost. This is the compost that was in the grill bags. And this was some organic compost we got. So I think it might be lacking of nutrients, so I need to definitely feed them. And I may actually use that soil conditioner, put a good layer in each of them. Hopefully that will give it what it needs. So this here is a paprika. I'll put the name of it on the screen. Um, and it's a sweet one as well. well. I can't wait to try. I do not do chilies. So this year I said I am only doing sweet peppers. I do have one variety of chili growing and I'll show you that in a moment. Let's just finish the sweet peppers first. And there's another nap here, pointy red. And this is this Amy Sweet Hungarian. And that is another Dido de Mocha or something. And then we have another paprika, another paprika, but look how these grow. They grow in like a small cluster. So the plant doesn't actually get that big. But that one's nearly ready to harvest. And there's another one there, lots of flowers on, and another one here, and they're growing really well. So this is all the heirloom sweet peppers I'm growing this year, and every single one of them are from real seeds. And then in front of the sweet peppers, we have three containers of ginger. I did ginger on my first year of growing. It grew, but I harvested it way too early. On BBC Garden as well, they said I think it was at least 11 months before harvest. So yeah, these can go into the polytunnel once we get the polytunnel. And then in this one here, we have the Kajari melon. So this is from Baker Creek Seeds and ah, oh, the stripes on it. But the colour and the appearance of this melon is absolutely beautiful. I originally saw it on Roots and Refuge in America, um, Jess, she grows them and I had to try and get some seeds to grow and look, it's, yeah, please grow. And next to it we have a giant tomato, so I got this from a follower or a friend, Stephen, and yeah, it's a giant tomato, Big Zach I think maybe. But he is in an air pot and it is quite a lot of coconut coir in there and then some super strong organic compost and I've been feeding it loads and you can see it's doing really well and it's not drying out and then over here at this end there's another one 
that is doing really well so hopefully we get at least one big tomato it'd be interesting to see then here we have a crystal apple and a crystal lemon cucumber and as you can see the leaves are looking very yellow um been a bit neglectful in this greenhouse i'm not gonna lie but now that i've got that feed to try from natural growers hopefully that will give it the boost it needs so hopefully in the next video it will be growing all the way up there filled with fruit and down here these are the only chilies i'm growing this year i did say i wasn't going to grow any chilies and i wasn't going to grow anything just because it looks cool but look at this chili it's called a razar yeah i'm not going to even pronounce the name i will put the name up on the screen and this is from baker creek seeds and when i saw it i just fell in love with it and it's like it's engraved starting to ripen as well now and we have what five plants i pinched that one out a while ago and it's actually doing good and sending out some side shoots that one there is doing the best but that one there is not even really engraved you can see a, a few little lines but with not growing them to eat I've been a bit neglectful of them but I just want to fulfill those I need to find someone to try them because I don't want to try them no I'm not even going to attempt to last time I tried to even save seeds from a chili I burnt my face off and if you remember that from last year I think it was at the beginning of this year actually yeah not happening again and then next to the crystal apple cucumbers and the crystal lemon cucumber there's some aubergines again they're just in some grow bags there were just some spare plants that I was going to give away but with us getting the polytunnel I thought I may as well try and keep some so most of these as soon as the polytunnel's up they're going to go in there and I'll probably put them into some bigger pots as well yeah i just thought i'd try and save as much as i possibly can they should stay smallish yeah hopefully hopefully the polytunnel should be off in a month no nope. ben do not put a date on things no nope. i'm not going to put a date on when the polytunnel is going to be up because i just stress myself out so yeah they're good in here and then if the polytunnel is done they will get moved in there and live out the rest of their life but that is everything from this greenhouse just smells of garlic in there absolutely beautiful so as you can see it is a bit of a building site over there i'll probably make it sound a lot worse than it actually is but we'll go over there and have a look in a moment but in the meantime let's talk about all the pots we've got around the greenhouse and beside the chicken run so over here we have a bit of a mixture of plants that these are okay these are some holy basil that started to go to seed these are a mixture of flowers and herbs yeah and there's some basil and some bits back there that haven't been planted yeah they they're fine <laughs> and then here we have a few aubergines a few strawberries that slugs have been eating yeah there's been so much going on at this plot with the chicken and polytunnel prep and their fencing being done what i'll show you in a minute it's just been a bit hard to remember all the little jobs here's more orange thyme that I grew from seed. We have some dahlia cuttings there that I brought out from the greenhouse yesterday. And there are some fuchsia cuttings that I should have planted. It's not that I don't want to plant them, I just don't know where I want them to go. Right. Yeah. Everything's a bit full. Here are the other chilies that I kept back from what I grew for Rohanna that pretty much died. I don't know if you remember them in the last video, but I brought them out a couple of days ago and they're actually enjoying being outside, so hopefully. We may get some chilies that I can give to people and they can go into the polytunnel. In the next bit we have some squash and they're not doing too good. So I'm not holding up too much help from but then this one is sending out side shoots. So I think if I, I may just undo it from there and just let them grow down. I don't think they're really wanting to grow up. And this weather we've had is not brilliant down there is some geums and some sweet williams and here are the lupins so i wasn't too sure if they was even going to flower and then as soon as they start to get bigger the slugs yeah but maybe we'll have a flower some more flowers 
And then in the pots beside the greenhouse, we have some basil. So I'm very surprised the basil is even here still with the amount of slugs we've had. And it looks like there seems to be a volunteer tomato has popped up there. This must have been from ones I grew at home in the garden last year. I just bought them here with the same soil. So it must have been a seed. And then these are the pear drop cherry tomatoes. I loved them last year in a soup. Absolutely beautiful. And then we have a mixture of flowers, marigolds, curry plant that I got given. So I thought I'd just plant it there. Some more calendula and some more calendula as well as some flowers. So we have some lavender here on the table. I need to find somewhere to plant this. And here are a couple of dahlias that I grew from seed and look at, absolutely beautiful. I repotted it yesterday and I repotted that one as well. They're very compact and small. Yeah, so I've left them on the table and the slugs aren't getting them up here. Well, it's absolutely brilliant. These dahlias aren't doing as well. I keep moving them about because of everything going on with the polytunnel. But the slugs have demolished it, but they're not eating the flower buds. They're just eating the leaf, so at least it's got something and the wildlife are enjoying them. And that's why I decided to grow these varieties. And down here in the, the rockery sort of flower bed, we have the GM. The globe artichoke is still there and I'm letting it go to flower. We have some orange poppies here and there's quite a lot of seed heads come back. So over the next couple of days, I'm actually going to cut back all the seed heads and it will allow hopefully another lot of flowering. That's what I did with the last lot and it gave me all of these. And then we have a salvia hot lips planted behind there with some lobelia there. And then we have the apple tree that my mum gave me and it's actually fruiting this year. It was absolutely brilliant. I can't wait until it gets bigger. It's gonna look beautiful. And then we have a mixture of a few flowers from Cosmos Zinnias and a few different things. And at the back, there is some Vibernia that I got from a Hannah's plot. You can just see the purple flower up there and there's a lot more of them at the back. So hopefully they'll take off soon. And the apple trees along here are doing really well. There's one that is dying. But we're removing that one anyway because I have another apple tree that I'm going to get that I want to plant there. It tastes like strawberries apparently. And it's from Devon, it's an old, old one. So I'm really looking forward to trying that. And this bit here is a bit of a mess at the moment. As you can see what we've had to deal with over the last few months. That is from here and just there. It used to be a house here. So it's a bit of a nightmare. But the pond's gone. We have two more tyres put in there. So now the polytunnel will fit in here. The cane, the cane. Just put the carpet down so stop weeds. But to be honest, we're gonna. I've got my brother coming down on the weekend to do some more of that for me because I physically can't do it. What's annoying? I just want to get stuff done, but I've just got to have learnt to be patient with all of this that one's not being patient and wants to get in so she won't go stop gobbing but i just tried to put her in and she wouldn't so she can wait here we have some potatoes these are shetland black potatoes that are due to be harvested now i'm going to do a video for each variety because i've never grown these before they're all old heirloom varieties yeah so it's going to be interesting to see what they look like but we'll do a video for them very soon but i'm not going to bore you and talk about potatoes they all look the same at the moment. You can't really see much. I would tell you the names, but off the top of my head, I can't remember. So we'll talk about them when we go to harvest them. These here are all Maris Piper, I believe. And then behind the potatoes, we have the tire wall. They haven't been filled up yet. We have a mixture of flowers. There's a yellow geum that I didn't even realize I had. And then there's a pink flower. I can't remember the name of that one off the top of my head. And then next to it we have more Swiss giant peas with two lots of them and then we have some runner beans these are the scarlet emperor so at least we're going to have some up here and i can keep these back for seed for next year and then these ones here are the greek giganti so hopefully 
they survived they look like they survived and they're climbing so we will have some of them we can keep back for seeds what i'm really happy about and we've got the blue hide beans down the bottom that are growing so not all the runner beans will be demolished hopefully and we get some seeds for next year then in this here we to be honest i'm not too sure what's in there most of it's weed yeah weeds there is some flowers in there though and this here is coriander ah oh, i love coriander i'm not a big eater of it but the flowers of the coriander they're gorgeous so i've sprinkled quite a lot of seeds around places hoping they'll germinate got some more coming up in here with some tree spinach i don't mind if it self seeds and it is yeah a building site here the rubble this is where the new pond is going to go so the chicken fencing will come up here to there and it'll be connected down there so it'll be a straight line and they will have this whole section they will even have the greenhouse so once the sweet potatoes are done i'm going to take that out let the chickens go in there and they can dig it down make it nice it's full of rubble and stuff but yeah it'd be good for them for winter to give them a bit of protection but it will be nice once the pond is here i want it to be flush with that side and then raised on this side and I'm going to turn the whole tyre into a pond this time and then plant the whole area up around it and maybe put a fruit tree up here. The wind is starting to pick up so I don't know how much long we have before the weather turns. And then have a nice little seating area here outside of the polytunnel because the polytunnel should come to about there-ish. We still haven't worked out the exact location. It'll fit there but we just need to work out the last few bits but we're just going to level it first. And down here we have garlic and lots of weeds by the looks of it we just moved the bag down here the other day and i haven't actually checked it much this was the garlic that i got sent by my admin at allotment bible to see what it does planted it really late so it'll be interesting to see what we got i've got rust now i've noticed but it's grown in a grow bag i believe i got from marshall's but the plan is maybe next year because of white rot is get a few more of these and fill it with fresh compost blood fish and bone and that and yeah grow some onions and that in them and garlic because we've got white rot in these beds as well hopefully there'll be no white rot in the polytunnel so i can do some garlic in the autumn in there like charles dowding does saw his results recently it's like wow i want that sort of garlic it's just a mess, it literally really is. The old roof cover, bits and bobs, but we will get this sorted out very soon. Broom that stopped flowering, and then here we have some blueberries. And again, I've just had to find homes for places. Originally it was all going to be up there this year, we wasn't doing the polytunnel a couple of months ago. So when I planted everything, all of this, was growing up there had plenty of space and so now it's all squished yeah all the potatoes we've got loads down there that we're due to harvest soon as well i believe more here then we have the temporary pond and some plants with my my ferns i'm a little bit of a a fern addict i'm not gonna lie so i've got some baby ones down there and i want to get some more i really want um a dixonian fern one day i will foxglove that is going to go to seed more temporary ponds so you'll probably remember this i've been posting about it on facebook and instagram this here is what the chickens planted no idea what it is to me it possibly looks like a courgette but then it's started to grow from there so now i'm not too sure I know it's definitely not a courgette because courgettes don't grow in the boars like that and I didn't grow any like that unless it pollinated with something else. So it's going to be interesting to see what it is. It's been very lucky that the girls haven't actually eaten it through the fencing. There's a double layer so they can't actually get to it. What has been brilliant but the problem is when we did a new fencing it's going to go right around 
and that's going to be right in the middle so probably temporary fence it off maybe hopefully free food for the chickens so i'm going to try my best to save it if not i just think it's too big to even move yeah i'm not even going to attempt to move it to be honest either way it's going to feed the chickens and then next to it we have some more potatoes and there's a grapevine i bought from home once things are a bit more sorted i may plant it somewhere i'm not too sure the variety though i prefer to get one that i know the variety and i know that it's going to give me what i want i'm a bit cautious about planting things that yeah i'm not going to eat so i like a nice big red juicy grape and i believe that one is a green one so and the potatoes continue on this side of the greenhouse that's one thing we're attempting to go self-sufficient in this year it was onions as well the onions is not happening but we still got chance for the potatoes and there's lots more up there as well this side here is my plot neighbor's plot these are all my potatoes i think there's eight bags of desire and that's a main crop what i'm hoping will store really well we did they stored really well last year but we didn't grow as many while we're here let's have a look at what the chicken fence is going to be so we're using harris fencing and what we're doing is we're putting posts in and then we're going to bolt them together eventually at the moment they're just cable tied and then we're going to dig a trench and then add wire mesh down and out six inches just like what we did with the chicken run and then we're going to backfill it with all that rubble that is over there so nothing can dig under and then we're going to eventually put wire mesh on the side sort out some sort of roofing maybe so it is secure but mainly it's just for when i'm here they can come out that's going to go right the way down to there and then back up i decided to put the fence in on the inside just for looks for my plot neighbor it looks a lot better with the wood posts there instead of the metal on the outside but this here is all going to be moved soon it's just temporary then put there back here at the moment i need to put the lid back on that is the compost area that we're still building we've got a few more pallets to attach to go down there but the first one is done and it's doing really well keep giving it a turn and the temperature the other day was absolutely boiling put my hand on it and yeah it was rather hot to keep it there so all we've got left really to talk about is the sweet potatoes in that greenhouse so i got these sweet potato slips from highland horticulture and i even gave some away to a follower on my facebook page but we have carolina ruby there's two of them there and then we have Beauregard and there's two Beauregard and then there's two O'Henry and two T65 as well T65 here is doing the best and it's starting to grow but the Beauregard as well they look nice sturdy and strong this is the first time growing these and I've not done anything special these were previously used for potatoes at the beginning of the season so i put lots of blood fish and bone in them and planted them just see what they do this year i'm just taking a bit more of a relaxed approach i'm not going to go out my way plus i want to see if this way works if it don't work we will try something different next year so that is everything that garden and plant related talked about next thing we're going to do is go in there see the chicks yeah because they've got so big you got lady b elizabeth emerald penelope and rose the five ladies and then in here we have these guys have got a lot bigger as you can see and it's not going to be long before they can be mixed i think about a week hopefully then the new fence will be up only reason i don't want to is because they're a bit small still i don't want to clip their wings because when i mix them together i want them to have every opportunity to get away from the big girls so at least this way they can still fly and i haven't got to worry about um getting over the little fencing because once that's up yeah 
but in the meantime it's working fine like this as you can see they're very healthy well what a nightmare that was so I came in to record them and then the well bar cockerel decided to catch a little field mouse oh they're dinosaurs those chickens are savage yeah I expected it from the big ones but I suppose these are just as bad so that there is Nancy she is a well bar hen he doesn't have a name because he's going to a new home then this little black one here she is Etta and then that one just there she is called Hermione after Hermione from Harry Potter she is a cream leg bar the little black one called Etta she is the rare Shetland fowl that's the well bar cockerel and then in there as well is snow at the back I have found a new home for snow already I hope but he is absolutely gorgeous he's in there hiding I will show you him up close in a minute but that little lavender aracuna at the back she still doesn't have a name I say she we're still not 100% sure but she's growing very similar to Duchess just 10 times smaller yeah I don't know why she's so small because she is a large chicken that one is smaller than the bantam breeds there was a bale of straw here a minute ago that I just moved but these six she has raised them brilliantly she is a brilliant mum she decided to come in with us I think one of them just sneezed <laughs> But Lady B is no longer in with them, so they, they go in here at night time. She is back mixed with the other ones. And I've been handling these a lot more now, because at first Lady B wouldn't let us handle them. There will be a video coming of her raising these chicks and adopting them, and only sitting on an egg for three days, and then she adopted the rest of them. So she only hatched one. You can come this way, mister. <laughs> oh, mummy told him off. Someone's been a bad boy. But that there is Snow. He's named after Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, one of my favourite TV shows. And he is absolutely gorgeous. He's got, let's say he's got good tips. But he carries a green egg laying gene. And he is a rare Shetland fowl as well. And he is going to go to Rahana's friend's small holding. So she came to see him about a week ago and said she wanted him. She's just started keeping chickens again. So, yeah. What I'm really happy about, that's why I've named him. She can rename him, but to me, he's always going to be known as Snow. I've fallen in love with him. So it's going to be hard for when he does go. But we're not allowed cockerels here, so once he start making a noise, yeah. He'll be gone, but in the meantime, I'll raise him into a tame cockerel, hopefully. He's the first one that runs to me and says hello, not to fly kick or anything. But this one here, she's got darker since having them. So before you can see just like the slight brown, the lighter brown marks on her feathers. So that was her old feathers. And then she raised them and quite a lot of her feathers came out to keep them warm. And now, look at her. She is gorgeous. Her colour is, well she's grey now, she's not a dirty brown. And I noticed earlier, we got a first lot of blackberries ripening, so blackberry picking time is gonna be coming soon. So we're coming to an end of this video. We have shown you everything up here on the chicken orchard. Well, I think I've shown you everything up here on the chicken orchard. I bet you there's something I missed. I do post regularly on the Facebook and Instagram page so if I have missed anything I will post it later on and 
you may see something that you would like to try and grow yourself. The place is a bit of a mess at the moment, but over the next couple of weeks, it will hopefully transform. And by the next tour, I'll be able to show you the progress on the polytunnel. Hopefully, I can't wait. Be ready for autumn planting and to harvest, hopefully in the winter. So if you're either watching this on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube, please like, follow or subscribe to our channel or our page. I'd really appreciate it. So thank you and we'll see each other soon. Call me out tiger, call me out, why don't you learn? Lift me up higher, above the clouds, won't you learn? The scenery is right, go right in I want to fall deep within But don't leave me hanging Just cause I'm too proud Whisper away my outdated doubts Somebody do me the courtesy Dress me down That old yet I'm far too young 